Hey the internet, Bushi here. I just returned from vacation. Doesn't really matter for this video, but partially it does because uh, my hexagon grid video from a couple of months ago uh, got some very interesting comments talking about this one here. And I was really pumped to try them out and that is why we're here today. So let's start for the best hexagon grid techniques or technique for Fusion 360 in 2023. Let's go. All right, so we jumped right into Fusion. We start with a sketch. As always, we add a polygon because a polygon is uh, everything that we are here for, right? Inscribed polygon. We put it uh, at the center. We organize it a little bit. And then come the juicy helper lines that do all the work for us later. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen the first video where I went through my first kind of a technique, uh, go back, you find it somewhere here, um, and make sure you watch it first. Otherwise, you cannot see the subtle differences in this now changed approach to the original one. That would be a pain, right? So go for it. And last but not least, we give it a dimension that makes kind of sense. In my case, 30 millimeters, and we're good. Well, now comes a bit of a weird step. Um, to make the web tool actually work, uh, we need to have a extrusion there first that we get rid of in a second. So hang on there. And actually we need my the sketch back. And now already comes the web tool. So we go for the web under create web. And what we do is we select the profile and we give it a thickness of, uh, in my case, like let's start with five millimeters. Let's be precise. Um, and here I go for distance. Five millimeters. Go away. Yeah, I know. I understand it. Okay. 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 Right. And now I get rid of the, um, the base that the web tool actually needs to work against, otherwise it doesn't work. If somebody knows how to use the web tool without such a kind of hack, just put it in the comment section below if you know how to do that. I would be really pumped to, to know that. All right. And now something that I haven't done this way. So uh, in the old video, I first used the pattern tool to replicate the shape and then used uh, the web tool. But apparently that is uh, a bit, you know, more processing hungry. So doing it this way seems to be a bit more optimized uh, for the processing. And now we go for the pattern tool under create pattern, rectangular pattern. And something different is now we are not going to replicate the body or the face or whatever. We go for feature and feature we use and select the web tool. And now comes also the, the like secret source of this approach, the axis. And there we select the helper lines of the original sketch that we put in there so that the pattern is actually following those lines in those directions uh, and not kind of X and Y like uh, usually. All right, uh, we also select symmetrical. And as for a distance, we have now the uh, the diameter or let's say is it the diameter yeah i think the diameter diameter of 30 uh this doubled and then plus the five uh, that we have as a thickness that is actually something you should put in a variable if you change it later that is just something i remind um, i remember now right so 30 is not enough we need to double and then we need actually uh go a bit further to the um, extrusion thickness. And the same for the other one. Uh, and now we can actually scale it up a bit. So let's go for a 15 in this direction, 15 in that direction. Uh, and something that I realized uh, bef when I started playing with that, adjust can be also a bit power hungry. So optimized would be best, but didn't work in my case. Let's, let's try it out in this case. Yeah, doesn't work. So we go for identical, which worked previously. You can see it takes a moment to, you know, contemplate all the things that polygons are all about. And there we are. And now we have kind of a polygon 
field that you can also adjust uh, here by clicking sub sub su suppression so you can select which of the polygons you actually want to replicate and which you don't to um, adjust a bit already now to the shapes that you are going for in the end. All right. Now let's do one final thing. As I said in the beginning, when I now change the thickness of the web, which is like why I, why I was doing and searching for this approach in the first place, I guess this approach fails horribly because I'm now changing it for the web, but the pattern, exactly, the pattern uh, is unaware of this. And now, as you can see, there are <laughs> gaps between the polygons, which is obviously not something that we wanted. Um, and to counter that, uh, we can actually do something um, uh, with, with user parameters, I think. Yes, add a user parameter, and that is, um, in my case, thickness. And here I would like to enter 5. Okay, now we have a user parameter called thickness as a variable that we can use in uh, all the other features and tools that we used. And instead of 5 millimeters, I go now for thickness. Boom. And then for the pattern tool, why is it... Hello, do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's thinking a lot. And here we go for 60 instead, plus the thickness, and the same here. Now it's thinking again, because polygons are very complex. And there you go, and it didn't work. Why? Ah, because I'm stupid. <laughs> thickness is there and depth is there. Right. So this can stay actually. This can be, I don't know, well, you know one, one, one centimeter for metric terms. And then the thickness is the thickness. And now it should work. Now it has to contemplate everything again because polygons. And there you go. And now you can change this parameter um, here. So for example, we can go for very, very thin, I mean, not very, but thin thickness polygon, thick, thick, very thin, thick, so very thin polygons um, that also adjust then their spacing in between. Cool. Yeah, great technique. I'm not sure it's actually more, uh, it's, it's optimized in terms of speed, calculating that, but definitely I like the way uh, the, the structure is, is set up here uh, in the, for the feature section. Um, yeah, I think it's a great way to, to operate uh, the, the, the hexagons and, and do whatever you want to do and need to do with hexagons. And with that, we are at the end of this video. If you like it, please hit subscribe and uh, thumbs up if you want. If you don't, then uh, thumbs down or jump in a circle or whatever. I would like to see you. I mean, I can't see you, but I would like to, uh, but I can't. So uh, if you enjoyed this, you know, then let's see each other some other time. I'm Bushi, over and out, bye.